Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Boring Land. Oh, just kidding. On. Blasphemer. Oh, Hello, my. Boring Review Nation. <laughs> we know all things. Hello, Boring Review Nation. Gabe, Nick, and Hopefully we are here today. Not bad. <laughs> we are here today to review the first episode of Patel Lock. Now, if you guys uh, heard in one of our recent videos, Nick was talking to, <laughs> we were talking about, Nick had sent me, um, oh, it was the reaction we did to Patel Lock. And Nick had sent me the, um, the a text message and I thought he thought it was about a rapper or something like that, the show. So I was like, oh, okay, it was kind of late when he sent it to me, but it was actually, and he said, wait till the end of the show and you hear this guy's rap sheet. I took that as rapper for whatever reason. But now I understand because at the end of the sh you know, towards the end of the show, they find out who he is. And we're gonna, we're gonna get into the whole episode shortly. But they're like, you know, he's been no, you know, he's uh, uh, uh wanted for kidnapping, extortion, arson, this. Oh, yeah, and 45 murders. <laughs> I get the cops that are holding them are looking at each other like, oh, wow, this is a serious, serious dude. So uh, I, I love this show. Nick, where do you want to start? All right. So first of all, I just want to say, don't forget to like and subscribe. I just want to say that, you know, you destroy me whenever I go a little bit ahead and you just went right to the end. That's OK. Um, that's what's great about this show. First of all, so let, let's just let's just start at the beginning. I'm going to give the quickest most basic synopsis i can ever think of so this is a show that has a um a trio or yeah a quadruple amount of people a quartet a three quartet. boys and a girl and they get arrested before they're um supposedly going to commit an assassination on a journalist who is the head of this uh, tv studio or whatever that is the news and so they are caught before it happens and they're in jail, and they're processing them, and this is basically the whole show. Why do they want to go after this guy? What's the story with that? We there are no other people included, and you have this police detect or police officer who has never really gotten a chance to run his own investigation, played by Jadeep um, Halawat, Halawat, and he is from Gangs of Wasper. He is from Boggy 3 and many other things. He plays Chadhari. And he is our main character for the most part. And he's an older gentleman. He's older than we are. He's been in his career for about 15 years. He gives a cool little explanation of the three universes and how Patalok fits in there. But he is this guy who feels slighted his whole life. Like, I've been doing it for 15 years. I feel like I'm pretty good at this, and I don't ever have a chance to get a case. He gets his chance just from happenstance because their main detective is out of town for about a week or so. And the guy who in intelligence or whatever wants is moving fast. He's like, I don't care about we're waiting a week. No, we're not doing that. Let's just give it to Chahari. He'll take care of it. And so um, that's how this show goes. It's this investigation. And for me, there, there's a lot of things I love about this show. And when I watched the first episode, I sent that text to Gabe, and I was like, man, this is, this is going to be our next show. I know people want us to do a Sir. People want us to do the Mumbai Indians cricket show. But this is our next series that we're going to do episode by episode. And this this show, for me, I want to double check if Anurag Kashyap is involved in this show whatsoever. I don't think he is, not as a producer, um, not as a director or anything, not as created by – this show has, um, in my opinion, kind of his style in it. It has a little more mature language. It has mature situations that are going on. Mm -hmm. But it feels like it's in a universe of a film or a show that he would create. So for me, I'm a huge fan of him. I got really into this show. But just it's it's kind of a next level. It's these characters. These actors have gotten into these characters. They have created this world for us. And it's like a dark world. It's an interesting world. It's completely based on reality. It's not a fictional place, but it's just, for me, it's so intriguing. You know, I think that, and you kind of mentioned a uh, journalist. Um, uh, his name escapes me. Who's the actor that plays the journalist? So the character's name is Sanjeev, I'm pretty sure. Well, his character's name is Sanjeev. The actor but... is Naraj Kabi. Did you recognize him? Yep, it, he's, it, come it on, bro. 
Sacred Games, dude. Oh, Come man, on now. Time. It took me till the beginning of the second episode. He's the cop from Sacred uh, Games, the main um detective. But I bring his story up because his story is so reminiscent of a movie that I absolutely love that I, I believe you actually put me on to, Kill the Messenger with uh, Jeremy Renner. And it's about uh, Kill the Messenger, just a, a quick synopsis. It's about the guy, True Story, who... Um, he broke the story of the Iran Contra scandal and how the US CIA was using the military basically to sell weapons and allowing the Colombians and Cubans and Nicaraguans to come in and sell drugs in the United States in order to exchange those weapons for drugs because we couldn't directly intervene over there. And how Rick Ross and all these other guys, basically, uh, um, Delino Blandon, all those guys. We're basically working for the CIA, and ba- and the guy, you know, he's at a bar at w- one point, and he talked about how man journalists used to be respected. Now we're killed, we're ostracized, you know, we're uh, 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 um, threatened, we're chased down, and then you know, where he makes a joke because they cut, uh, they, they've been at the bar so long. One of the waiters comes by and says, "It's closing time, sir." So he goes, and now we even get kicked out of bars, but you <laughs> yeah. know journalists are some of the, in my opinion, are some of the bravest people. And after watching Kill the Messenger, I was like, man, because you got to put your name to it. And once you put your name to it, man, they know who you are. And normally you're going after powerful people. And he's a person who you already mentioned that these four or this quartet is trying to kill, supposedly, because we don't even know how the cops or, or, or the intelligence came across that information, right? We're like, okay, that's who they're trying to kill. But it's like, they, the, the cops go to interview him in his house and they're like, well, have you upset anybody? You know, have you pissed off any powerful people? And he looks at me and says, it's in a job description. You know what I'm saying? So like, I, but, I don't think I could do that. I couldn't yeah, imagine. Since you brought us there, that part was, was kind of odd for me. And maybe it was intentional to show um, kind of the noviceness of Chahari and his first case. But he didn't ask him a lot of questions there. His main question, his main thing was about whether he's having an affair or not. And just oddly enough, maybe he had had affairs early already, but oddly right. enough in this episode, he's talking to a young lady at the bar and, you know, he's kind of going down that road already, but he straight out lies and denies it. And then he asks him, I think he also asked him like, is there anyone else you can think of or whatever? And he says, no. And then he gives that line, like you said, it's in the job description. I don't know if he's telling by far the whole story. It, there was an interesting small little snippet that was a good character builder for his character, and that was his wife. His wife suffers from anxiety. She suffers from some kind of depression or high anxiety or something like that where she just has a hard time. And this guy was – you know, his life was almost taken. They were able to prevent it before any shots were fired, but right. he's in the news. He's a, he's a target, obviously. He upset the wrong person, and he's just trying to get into his home. There's reporters everywhere. And she's freaking out saying, console me, console me. And he's like, you know, can it just not be about you for one day? And, you know, it's my heart went out to her, but also I can see his frustration because he almost got killed. And he tells her, I almost got got killed today. He tells her that. Exactly. I know people. I have family that have serious anxiety. And so I feel like I'm more sympathetic to it. But it's not something easily controlled. Anyway, I don't want to get too far off task, but I thought that was an interesting character builder where you can see where he's at, not just in his marriage, but kind of in his life. He, I'm telling you, I did not recognize him at all from Sacred Games. It right. was the longer hair. He he looked a lot different to me. I have no idea the what it was. gray like. hair. He looks a lot more, well, a lot older, a lot more distinguished. As much as I hated him in Sacred Games, and I hate, I, I didn't even like love to hate him. I just hated him. I automatically like his character in this show. I, I automatically started rooting for his character, obviously Shahari too. But then you have these criminals, and I'm kind of shifting gears real quick. The criminals we get, these these four people and the girl, she's just crying the entire time. And I have a theory about her that you know maybe I'll mention later. But the, the three guys, they're so different in their own way. One guy just thinks he's way too cool for school. Um, what does he go by? Um, Job, I think his name is or something like that. And then you have the other guy who is not as big and tough. He goes by M, Kabir M. But then you have our man. I mean, this guy, holy cow. He was compounder in Mirzapur. I'm trying to find his actual name because this guy 
We don't get a lot of him in this first episode. I did watch the second episode, but this guy is unbelievable. And it's driving me crazy that I can't just pick his name up right away from my list of names here. But those who have seen this show know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to find a name in a second. But Gabe, isn't this guy awesome in the few minutes we get him in? My only complaint is he was magnetizing the entire, I mean, from his opening scene when he is in the hotel room where everybody else, just the look on his face, you know, mad dog, to, you know, when he's in the car with the, again, you're right, maybe he gets 10 minutes of screen time out of a 42-minute episode, yeah, yeah. but he's a scene stealer. Every single scene he's in is amazing, and he does the whole hand thing where, you know, when he's in jail, like, I mean, the look on his face, the look on his face, he, he I'm not sure they did a lot of takes on that, but man, he is in that character. Menacing, absolutely menacing. While you're looking up that name, um, just to go back for a little bit, again, it's so funny how interpretations are different, but having studied law enforcement, again, you know, uh, some of my background, criminal justice, Air Force, when I was over at, at UNLV, and I got family in law enforcement. That's one of the first things that they're going to look for. 95% of the times, most of these crimes can be solved, when, especially when somebody is murdered, and the first person they look at is the spouse. And if there's not a spouse, is there a lover or, you know what I mean, a mistress? or it? it, it so that's a really good question. And I think this guy's an excellent detective because even when he's getting information from the uh cia the intelli quote unquote intelligence they're giving him bits and pieces and he's oh, like minimal. he's giving that up because he's questioning them he's like so they gave you where did we get the information anonymous tip so that what was the anonymous tip that these four people that were in a hotel room were going to kill um someone interesting so how did the per anonymous that tip know from? that it was going to be that these four people were even at this hotel room. Like, he's questioning them. Like, yo, you guys are giving me bits and pieces that doesn't even make sense. So between that and his interview with, um, oh, I forgot. You, uh, you mentioned his name. Ramvir, is it? Or or uh, Janvir? Kambir M? No, no, no. The reporter. Oh, Z Sanjeev? Sanjeev. Between that and his interaction with Sanjeev, I think he's an excellent detective, okay? Because he's already, like, poking holes into what's going on with uh, with this case. And you 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 got the same feeling I did. All's not what meets the eye, right? These guys, just to, uh, we don't want to ruin it for you guys, but the minute that these four guys leave the hotel, they jump in the car, and we're talking about our four criminals. So awesome. The cops are on them, or not the cops, but the, these these. And CIA. we don't know they're cops at first. We just see these people, and the guy kind of waves a gun. I've never seen in any TV show or movie right. a cop kind of wave a gun like that. Maybe they're trying to keep their cover. But man, I'm, I I started getting scared for these four guys, and then you realize, yeah, it's a good thing they caught them. Yeah, and then but here's a funny thing: when you're thinking about that, something else was gonna go down there because if you remember, they all pulled their guns and they were coming out their car, and then the main intelligence guy is like, "Oh no, the media's here!" You know, no, no firing. The media's here, so they had some more nefarious reasons. Like maybe they were just gonna take these guys out. You know what I mean? Like, yo, these guys, we already know one of them's got 45 bodies on them. Maybe they're too dangerous to be left alive so let's just take them out but that those cops those cia or they're not cops actually they're like investigators some type of um indian intelligence they looked shady and that whole interaction just how they gave him this case but didn't want to give him all the accurate information yeah how did you come across them how did you know where they stayed at this hotel well how did that anonymous tip know who they were staying at the hotel how did they know that he was gonna kill somebody i loved his line of questioning there yeah i watched one of my favorite shows is a show called chicago pd um, it's been on for several years, and it's about an intelligence group in the police force in Chicago. And the way that show has the intelligence group is it's kind of like a step up for a police officer or a detective to be in the intelligence group, like the, you know, the ivory tower, so to speak. And right. they kind of work under their own rules still under the police chief. So I wonder if this intelligence group is that same thing where they don't want to give too much information, kind of like the way feds and local cops, how they don't really want to divulge too much information. They find right. over jurisdiction. I'm not sure. But um, I just I loved everything about this show. The the phone being thrown in the river. I'm like, okay, what's on that phone? And what, he, obviously, we know why he threw it. He wanted to hide some evidence, but right. you know, they're going to find that phone. We're not sure. Um, there's a lot of questions that get asked, but I feel like the questions that I have are not questions that I'm frustrated about. I feel like I know I'm going to get them eventually. I feel like they set up things very. 
I can't imagine how hard it would be for a pilot episode for a first episode of a series to set things up, to set up intrigue, to try to get a little bit of closure on some small things so you get the interest, interest of interest, excuse me, of the audience. And then with this episode, it ends with that cool little cliffhanger, not really cliffhanger, but the sense of intrigue where it tells us who this guy is. So his actors, the actor's name is Abhishek Banerjee. And on Wikipedia, it doesn't even have a picture of this guy. I mean, where's the respect at? But this guy, his first film appearance was in Rang Di Basanti. He was one of the students auditioning for one of the roles, so that's kind of funny. But we first saw him in Stree, and then we also saw him in Mirzapur. And in Stree, he's he goes like that creepy, possessed guy. But before sure. that, he's a really goofy, nice guy. Mirzapur, Mirzapur, excuse me, he's a lot more creepy, but he's not the creepy guy. In this one, he is elevated to that guy. I feel like this guy... Um, he's got some serious, like you say, serious acting chops. This guy's got some skills. This guy's got some range, and I'm excited to see how he does in the rest of it. I hope he doesn't go too far over the top. He's to me, we always mention this, but he reminds me like he's in that Joker realm. Like right. he is in that space where he's not overacting, he's not ha 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 ha, but he's also menacing just by the look he gives you. He can be five foot two, he can be six foot ten, but that look, like Nawaz, you don't want to mess with that guy. He's doing that tightrope back right now, bro. He's right there. You know what I mean? He's on it. But like you said, any more, and then it'll be too over the top. So he's per he's doing it perfectly right now. Um, I will say though that watching this, my one disappointment was I thought he was gonna be like the like like the main focal point of the show. It doesn't seem like it is. We don't, I don't know. This is only the first episode, but like you said, it looks like the main um, detective is our main character along with the journalist. Cause they got the most amount of screen time. Um, but you know, and and that comparison I was making before, uh, it was Gary Webb. Okay. Kill the messenger was a true life story about Gary Webb. And funny enough, after his whole interview, I, I, um, I'm sorry, article came out and everything, you know, he was, they defamed and a whole bunch of people attacked him, even though his story was true. You know, they came after him several times. And then eventually, if you like look it up on YouTube and stuff like that, he died mysteriously. Uh, they say uh, it was a suicide. Like, come on, really? But this guy made some powerful enemies. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I think that this show is making some some very bold, bold statements. One of the things that they mentioned, that he mentioned, is like, you know, the media has become the enemy. And that's almost right here, like one of the big things we're going through in America with, you know, uh, 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 um, certain politicians and certain um, um, uh, 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 people basically claiming that, you know, media is just all fake news and this, this, and that. And now, you know, journalists, serious journalists are being attacked and their integrity is being attacked. And you're like, are you kidding me? You know, a journalist being uh, arrested on live television. And you're like, am I watching this? You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, I felt like for the longest time, journalists walked around with almost impunity. They could always be there to just report the story and not be afraid to become part of the story. And now I, I feel like if you take on a story that's too big, that's bigger than you, you know what I mean? You may just become a casualty of that story. Well, and, you know, my first impression when I was watching this, I was like, well, thank go goodness it's not that dangerous for journalists here in the States. But according to this story you're talking about, not so fast. So, I mean, they just make you get erased or something like that. If you get too close. So, I mean, mad prop and that job is such a thankless job. I mean, you're not going to make the millions off of it. They have to do all their research. They got to get their sources. I want to go back to um, what's the character's name? This this main scary guy. Uh, I cannot think of what his name is in the show. The shawl or something like that. But this guy, he really impresses me because he's so complex. You have the argument with the, the loud mouth guy in the hotel not wanting to pay for that food that he ordered but then sent back and blew smoke in the guy's face. And this guy just walks by and pays the guy. Like, we don't have time for this nonsense. Let's just pay him. Let's just get out of here. But at the same time, he's a rap sheet of 45 murders. Is he like the go-to assassin for these mobsters or these bad guys or whatever? And 45 murders, that's just what the cops have on him. Maybe it's much more than that. He just seems like, like, like you said, what's he doing in this, like, part of a four-man team with assassinating this journalist. Why not just do it on his own? I'm very intrigued by his character, and, and I think he does a great job. So 
him and Shadari are my favorite characters, but there's so many other characters. There's a storyline with Shadari's um, um, wife and whatnot, which is kind of funny. And you have his his assistant, his younger assistant, who seems like this guy is super sharp. Like this guy's going places. So they just create a nice world for us. I'm excited to watch the next episode. You know what? This show also gave me that feeling of like Mizupar, you know what I mean? And, and where every episode is a cliffhanger. Like, are you kidding me, dude? You know right. what I mean? And, and I said, because we talked about this, like, okay, we're going to do this episode by episode. When we watch the episode, we're recorded so we don't get too far ahead of ourselves or whatnot. And, but it's like, you get, I, I got to know what's going to happen next. I got to go know what's going to happen next. So, you know, stay tuned, guys, because I promise you the episodes are going to be coming much more frequently because I, you know, it's like, uh, uh, I have to. I have to watch it. Well, you know what I mean? And even with saying that, the crazy thing is, like I had mentioned in the community page, you know, our lives are a little crazy right now. And so me and Gabe, we try to record as much as we can the days that we do have available. So I actually have some video stockpiled. So this may have been recorded seven days ago. And so. We're going to record them fast, but they may get spread out as they come out. But like he said, it's not going to be too long before the next one. We hope you enjoy this one. Let us know, as always, if you want us to continue to record episode reviews on this. You know, we, we're probably going to watch the show regardless. But if you want to hear us talk about it, you want to hear our thoughts, let us know by liking this video. Let us know in the comment section. Show up to our videos. Obviously, we appreciate the love and everything. Don't forget to... um you know, be nice and do not have 45 kills on your rap sheet. And <laughs> until next time. We know all things. <laughs> have no kills.